Assalamu alaikum folks. Have you ever thought about your relationship with food? Well, this idea may not have crossed your minds up until recently. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced many of us to think hard about the issues which are important for our very own existence. And food security is certainly one of them. Today, we are excited to introduce to you a very special guest from a Singapore-based company called One Agrix. The name of the guest is Miss Diana Sabrain. And One Agrix is the world's first B2B e-commerce marketplace for agricultural and halal food. So let's learn from her about this all important issue. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much, Sister Diana Sabrain. I really appreciate the time you've taken to speak with me. Basically, we would like to know a bit more about your company as to how you got started with the company, what is your personal background, and what's the business model you're pursuing? Walaikum salam, Brother Hafiz. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak on behalf of One Agrix and a really amazing job you're doing with the Halal Times, spotlighting technology companies in the global Islamic economy, and really, really happy to be here. Now, um, it, if, if I can take you on a journey on how One Agrix started, um, it was from an idea in 2015, where, um, you know, for me personally, my journey in commodities, I still remember I was in Vietnam and we had to visit a rice factory and it was four hours going and then four hours coming back. So you can imagine it's eight hours just to trade rice. And from there, what I saw was there's Alibaba, right? And then there was um, other companies like Amazon, digital companies that are coming up. We call them um, e-commerce marketplaces. Back then it was more marketplaces. Right now it's e-commerce or digital platforms. And and from there, you know, I, I thought to myself, okay, why not? Let's um, digitize the agricultural sector. And in fact, um, it in many research has shown that it is the last sector to be digitalized. Um, bearing not normally the complexities in B2B trade. We are not talking about business to consumers. We are talking about business to business when you are dealing with bulk amounts, you're dealing with huge payments and you're dealing with shipping, right? And so from there, I thought, okay, hey, let's set up a platform. Let's do that. And from there, also noting that I am a Muslim and I see that the Muslim population, halal consumers, uh, actually growing everywhere. It's not only in the East, it's also in the West, where you see there's a growing population of um, halal consumers. And when we speak about this, halal consumers also consist of consumers who are non-Muslims. So you see people eating halal food because of its nutritional value, its strict food regulations, food safety regulations. At the same time, there's also an overlap between the kosher, Jewish community eating kosher, as well, who's also looking for certain religious requirement when they eat. And so that's right. when we decided to merge agricultural and halal onto one platform. And that's where the idea of One Agrix came about. How does your business connect various stakeholders in the ecosystem? So, so that's the thing which I, I wanted to mention. So at the beginning, we thought as, um, you know, okay, let's set up a marketplace, right? And then going forward, we realized with all the numerous complexities that we needed to solve, we evolved into an ecosystem. This is where we found that it is very critical for One Agrix to be a digital trade ecosystem rather than just a marketplace. And we never attach ourselves as being a full-fledged, um, say, blockchain company or full-fledged um, IoT company because technology is a commodity, um, technology evolves. And so that's why we call ourselves a digital trade ecosystem, whereby we, you know, like a puzzle, we connect different industry stakeholders together into one ecosystem. Having said that, ecosystems work with other ecosystems. You know, we look at the global market these days and we see numerous stakeholders claiming that they are silo ecosystem, meaning there's only one ecosystem. You can only, like, for example, the halal sector, one ecosystem, the agricultural sector, one ecosystem, it doesn't work that way. Cross-border trade has to lower barriers of cross-border trade. It is important for us to connect with each other. Connectivity, diversity, collaboration is important. And then you see this model as an ecosystem being aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, especially SDG 17. I'm an advocate of that. And I believe in that. I believe that collaboration will actually lower cross-border trade. And not only that, it will unite people. Very important. And uh, what are the benefits these buyers as well as suppliers uh, get by using your platform? 
let, let me touch with um, on the supplier side. Now, if you look at suppliers, uh, when it comes to cross-border trade, those that are able to afford selling at a huge amount cross-border trade or have shipping connections and shipping network. But now with digital platform, we realize this could empower SMEs, small, medium enterprises, your, your small holder farmers as well, medium um, holder farmers, just not commercial farmers to trade directly bypassing boundary spanners or what, what, what they call that a uh, middleman. Now, if you look at this food supply chain, there are six to seven or can be even more depending on which research materials you read middlemen in between and a lot of times they are exploitative middlemen they exploit the farmers they exploit the food producers and this is where the halalness of uh, an, an organization and the spirit of trade comes in halal is not only about permissible food it's about also the way you take care of people and so at one agrix that is our mission our mission is to empower more people more food producers more farmers more halal food manufacturers on the platform irregardless of size to the global market you know it can be regional you can you can be trading bulk locally as well but what we are saying is you're not confined to just a certain kilometers of, of your of your network let's say you're in pakistan for example right you're not just trading to your next door pakistan state you are able to actually go cross-border to trade in your neighboring neighbors or even we've seen amazing pakistani products like mangoes for example going yeah. all 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 over the world uh, from into singapore into 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 north america now for buyers what we are saying is you can trade all these numerous diverse foods, halal and agricultural, all over the world. It's not yeah. just confined to Southeast Asia, for example. Um, you know, we, we know that Malaysia, Indonesia, um, Pakistan, Bangladesh are popular for halal food products. In fact, Thailand as well, being a yeah. non-Islamic country. But then there's so many others. There's, there's you know, there's in, in the United States, there are amazing food companies. Um, I've just spoken to one, Crescent Foods, they're amazing. They, yeah. they have amazing um, ethical food products. And then um, there is all the way in, in the UAE, there's Al Islami Foods, amazing food products as well. So these are all um, uh, halal brands that we want to communicate to buyers. And you'd be surprised. Halal food products, procurement officers and buyers are normally non-Muslims. Yeah, that so, is so You get what I'm saying? So we yeah. are looking at an economic potential here not just a religious um, obligation, yeah. an eco economic potential, $2.5 trillion industry, a white yes. space, but who's who's there to help navigate it? And so this is where one agrees, we are, we, are, we are humble enough to know we can't solve this issue ourselves on food security, making sure 2 billion people by 2030s um, are being fed proper and you know transparent halal food products you know basically transparent in, transparent in, in terms of um the, the way they do business transparent in the food products and their ingredients but what i'm saying is diversification of food sources is what we offer to buyers telling buyers that hey you're not just um confined into halal food products from one part of the world what are the current growth projections you're looking at the reason i'm asking you this question is 85 percent of whatever we consume is coming from non-muslim countries we are producing only 15% of that. You are right by saying that, they, you know, we are not re leveraging on the vast resources in the OIC countries. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm pleased to say that for us, that is our focus, One mm -hmm. Agrix, um, what we have, um, have conversations with numerous personalities who can move the needle in the OIC. And, the, and one partnership that we have uh, is a partnership with International Trade Center, which mm -hmm. is based in Geneva. It is a, a UN and WTO mandate. And what it states is for us to use One Agrix as tech for good. Again, um, very UN SDGs aligned. So the technology that we use would be to empower not only the African continent, but also this includes the countries in the OIC countries as well, where we will go on the ground. We will um, partner with numerous government entities to say, hey, let's digitalize your food sector. And if you observe the OIC country and also the African continent, you know, there's an overlap there, uh, as you know, yes. um, they can literally feed the world. They have the resources not to only feed themselves and address poverty issues in their countries, but they are able to ensure that the world is being fed 
for the next you know generation so this is a one agrix what we are trying to do is we're trying to get to those uh, markets those food manufacturers and by the way the, um yes there's still a lot of work to be done to encourage those farmers uh, in terms of regulations and standards in cross border trade um however trade has been already been done for decades commodities has already been moved from those OIC African countries it is now how do we leverage and then create more value added products you know it would be nice to see if OIC country has um amazing wheat for example perhaps create um food package products you know the manufacturing manufacturing sector could flourish and as a platform we could help them market it all over the world let's imagine yes. for example yes. i'm a small farmer i've just heard the name of one agrix from a friend of mine i want to join one agrix as a supplier so what should i be doing yes so what one agrix does is we do outreach programs as well because we are aware that smallholder farmers and you be you know what when when we were invited to the african union commission in 2019 in ethiopia i met with farming associations which includes not only the african um uh, countries but also countries that are part of the oic and and i can tell you those farmers associations really empower and want to go digital it's just that they they have always felt that there's no outreach and access to them so what do you say about that small smallholder farmer this is already available in their hands they can either do two things go directly to us um you know uh, contact us and we know that farmers sometimes with internet um limitations they would rather use their phone and contact we do Most have um, yes we do that as well we recognize that this is an issue for any any digital companies digital platform ecosystem running trade to the world to say that hey email us They, they, it means they have not gone to the ground. They have not spoken to the farmers. They don't realize that you know you can't have internet all the time. You can't email all the time. Um, you know if they can can get you on SMS and phone, that is really amazing. Which many yes. of them are already at the mobile stage, right? So they can contact us directly. So, or secondly, their organizations that we partner with in let's say that country, the smallholder farmers could say, hey, to that organization, I want to trade my products. um digitally on one agrix can you help and we do assist from there as well being an individual could i use your platform so as an individual as a buyer so right now we are b2b it depends on the suppliers on the platform some suppliers the smaller ones they allow you to buy just 100 packets of their food products instead okay. of one full container which normally you know the minimum order quantity of suppliers really ranges between um their ca- their capacity so as an individual sometimes we also get um inquiries from the mom bakers you know those are house um the, those home baking businesses but they want to buy flour we have one inquiry which is on shea butter she said that oh can can i can i just buy um you know 50 kg worth of um shea butter it is possible to buy as long as it's wholesale so what are the steps which i will have to take to be able to complete uh, the ordering process now we have tried um and and we we are always testing this process to be as um less clicks as possible as seamless as possible and to also not rely um too much on just too much words basically less steps more imaginary and also we do have a live chat where you know if let's say you get stuck in any process you can message awesome. us but but that's more on the technical th- side of things which our onboarding team handles very well we provide an end to end solution meaning su- suppliers are able to not only choose their products right. at add to cart they can book shipment okay. and they can pay we have an right. escrow mechanism on our platform so it's an escrow payment system where mm-hmm. we realize with covid-19 pandemic it, okay. it has spotlighted the food fraud issue that's happening in the world now food fraud has been around for a very long time you said covid-19 gives it even more spotlight that oh no you know people are cheating and people are not paying um payments properly so what one agrix does as a digital platform we made sure that we partner with the best payment providers and yes, one ma'am. of them is sec regulated another one is partners with mes regulated as you know mes is one of the strictest as well um in the world they are based in singapore so what we do is that escrow mechanism allows um escrow payment service allows for inspection to happen before monies are being released or it also allows for dispute resolution in case if let's say in a buyer and supplier deal they're not happy 
we have that on our platform. So this is the thing which um, it is a value proposition and a need in the market so that buyers feel that assured that their trade is trade transaction is, is being, um, you know, is safeguarded. And it's 24 hours support, right? Our team members spans from different time zones. So yes, we strive to the 24 hours. Wow. However, yeah. we do mention that um, it could take um, within 48 hours as well. And any final message you would like to give to the stakeholders who are going to use your platform? So when we look at um, stakeholders, we're talking about multi-stakeholders approach. So stakeholders so far in our conversation now with you, we talk a lot, a lot about buyers and suppliers. But when we talk about stakeholders in a business perspective, we are talking about everyone in the supply chain that could make trade happen cross-border, right? So we are talking about halal certification body, halal standards bodies. We are talking about halal laboratories as well. We are talking about farming associations. We are talking about uh, halal uh, Muslim associations. And why I say there's also farming and agriculture is because, you know, you don't halal certify an apple. Um, you don't need to halal certify um, onions but they are still halal because those are permissible food. Normally halal certification, to my understanding, um, I mean, there are more experts here, but to my understanding, it is for processed goods. Um, it, it is also not, and it's not only halal meat. So my, my um, uh, you know, message here for multi-holders, stakeholders that I've mentioned and more beyond, you know, from fintech companies to um, trade finance companies is we need to collaborate. Now there is, don't make that $2.5 trillion um, number to be just a number. We need to realize it as an ecosystem or as ecosystems working together. And um, this is where, you know, data is the new oil, where, you know, um, our vision at One Agrix, what we want to see is having, you know, um, data collected, interoperable, um, being shared across numerous ecosystems that can, you know, uh, potentially we all will be creating a food bank, an agricultural and halal food bank where data would help yes. us um, not only trade, um, economic and power, but at the same time to uplift the ummah, um, uplift humanity. And uh, this is where technology should be used for good. I really appreciate the time you've taken to speak with us and speak about uh, these very important topics, which are important for the ummah and for all the yes. Muslims. And yes. uh, we look forward to speaking with you while you're taking your journey to the next level, inshallah, in the near future as well again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hafiz. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.